Hey, what's up guys? I'm Joe from Workbench, and this week we have a cool tip for you. But I have a little bit of a cold, so we might be doing this intro. Swear to me, a little bit of After Effects. <laughs> Alright, let's get to it. So I was talking to Andrew Embry, and he was saying that this would make a great piece of So I figured that's what I'd do. Imagine if I did this whole tutorial like this. <laughs> All right, before we get started, I'm going to explain the concepts about this, but not exactly all of the settings, because I'm going to make a download of this file available, as well as the two different presets I made based on this technique. So the end result of what I came up with is a couple of circles that are tied to the corners of this rectangle. And if we turn off this repeater right here, you can see that it's just this line. Let me turn this all off. It's just that line getting repeated the whole way. These are just different parts of a stroke colored. This could probably be made in a different way, and I'm sure I'm going to keep messing around with it, but I think this is a nice solution. Let me show you where I originally came from. So this version is just a single path drawn, and then it's linked to two other paths for the front and the back shadows. And it uses the same kind of repeater in order to make it thick. So you can see here various things are just linked to the sliders, like the back color. This is linking this back path to the main path, and each one has a trim path to stop it. So the white stroke goes from here all the way down to here, and then the front shadow one goes from there to there, and the back shadow one goes from here to here. So when you repeat it going this way, this part gets masked out by the front part of the white, and then this part gets masked out by the front part of the backside. If you really want to get creative, you could build this with like dashes or anything that can make this stroke differentiate along its length. And then you just repeat it in this direction, and you got yourself a flowing paper. So it's really quite simple. And actually what's kind of neat too is that if you don't want to repeat it this way, you can actually use After Effects' new 3D engine to extrude it along that length. As you can see, it's a little bit slower, but this is actually 3D. So you could take this thing and rotate it, and it's an actual full 3D object. So what's also cool about the 3D version is that you can actually get rid of the front and back splines and actually just use a light to make the shadows. And that'll actually naturally block out the light as it grows on. It's kind of quick, but you can see it up in here. Let me pause it on one of the frames. See, it's still white until the front part comes down and blocks the light. Same thing down here. And here's an example of the dash version. As you can see, it's a little harder to actually get to line up properly, and it seems to have this moray pattern, even though it's repeated in the same way as the other ones. So you might just have to tighten it up in the repeater. I'll leave that one in here, but that's not the one that I found to work the best. My favorite, actually, is the parametric paper one that I showed you in the beginning, because in this one, everything's an option in the effects panel. So you can actually change the height, and it'll dynamically change. You can change the width, make it thinner. You can change the size of each curl individually, so that can, we can have a huge top curl, small bottom curl, Make the height a little taller. So now you have a completely different looking piece of paper. So this is a pretty simple technique, but it was a fun one to make. I enjoyed figuring out how to actually get everything to work. And I'll definitely take requests, so if you have an idea for a cool preset, let me know. And if you'd like to help support what I do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. And definitely make sure you check out workbench.tv for more great content, presets, and stuff like this. I am Joe from Workbench, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> see ya.